We get asked a lot by people, what software do we recommend? And Robin and I, you know, will often give them, you know, three choices, but what are the things that they really definitely need to know about the vendor before they purchase or as they're evaluating different options? A very, yeah, that's a very important criteria. So I would say there's three absolutely essential questions to ask the software vendor before you purchase. And one of my first ones might surprise you a little bit, and that's who owns the company? And what I mean by that is a lot of these companies have been acquired by these large conglomerates or basically venture capitalist firms. So a lot of times what happens with that is they're going to cut corners. They usually cut it in the most expensive, and I can verify the most expensive part about managing pet software or any kind of software is the development mm -hmm. and the technical support. So it's extremely expensive and it's cost prohibitive. So a lot of times these companies will cut corners on those two very important things so they can have a better bottom line. So I would ask who owns the company? Have you been acquired? Things like that, because then you could know, you would know also if the company is in debt, because one of the things you probably don't even remember all of them, but we see them. Companies will open up. The person who, the venture capitalist will decide, oh, they're not making enough money. And so they get rid of them and then they close down and then they come running to us. This company went out of business suddenly and they can't get their data or whatnot. And it becomes very problematic. So I would I think that's one of the most important things to ask them is who owns the company? And I hopefully I explain why that's important. Um, yeah, also, and I, I will say, Paula, that Susan and I got, bitten by that a long time ago when we were first starting out and there was a um, very few vendors mm -hmm. who had software even in the market and so there was one that we recommended it's in my book and so and they were great until they sold their company and it was literally night and day and i'm not saying that necessarily has to happen if a company sells yeah. but it was night and day with that particular company and we just felt horrible because for so long we do we had recommended them and people were really happy until they changed ownership and then it was just yeah. like a light switch went off and it was terrible so i think that's a really interesting and good thing to consider and to look at it is and there's it's not like it, it doesn't always mean something negative but i would say frequently it does because if you don't own as you guys know when you own something, even people that are, you know, watching right now, you own your own business. You care more about the pets in your care than a company like that. So for, for me, from what I've observed in 14 years, that's been the trend. And that's why we always just say no. And my, my credo is over my dead body. So I, go, um, I need to sleep at night. These people have put their trust in us and that's extremely important to me. It's, it's my love, it's my passion, it's what I do. So uh, that's a good thing to know, who owns the company. The other thing is the development and support done in the United States. Mm -hmm. So anybody who picked a software that the software was done in a different country, you will know because if something goes wrong, there's nobody on the other side to fix it and it could be a sea of developers working in basically a developer sweatshop that are working on this system. So things go wrong in software. You have to have somebody who's not just a coding expert, but also an expert on some of the other things, security. Also, if it, we, have, we do a lot of thorough testing behind the scenes at PetExec, people just have no idea. They look at the features, they go, we have to make sure that the load balancers are in a certain rate so that your data isn't slow or these um, different servers. We have like about 10 now because we keep growing, I think 10 or 11. And you, you have to make sure for the safety of that client that you do a lot of thorough testing because if something goes wrong, it could impact billions of orders all at the same time and, and all these terrible things that can happen and have. We get to hear it um, when they're rushing in a tsunami 
uh, over to us begging us to help them. And of course we do our best, but of course things are gonna go wrong, but you want somebody behind the scenes who's gonna be able to help you. And an easy way to save a buck for them to go overseas and get development, but cheap is expensive. So we've always done our development in-house. We've never had, we don't outsource anything. We don't trust it. Important than more than one person in the company be able to program and code the software? Because I know sometimes there's one man shops. Oh yeah. That's, very risky as well. <laughs> That's a wonderful point. And let's speak to that because I've had that same scenario and I think they're the ones that bit you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, I, there's a few of them that it could be, but what happens is you have to always have a backup plan just in case the worst thing happens. So we, of course, at PetExec, we have three programmers. We have the lead programmer. We have somebody who's underneath, who's actually a, a very high level programmer. We can't just hire people and pay them low wages and expect them to do this type of very difficult and very you know, complex work. And then we have a junior programmer. So we have many people behind the scenes and engineers that help with the actual testing and making sure that everything lines up with what we say, because it's very true. You've got a one man shop and they catch a cold or whatever, and something happens and then you're, you're out of luck. The other thing, but I don't know how easy it is to ask somebody, I would be quick to answer. We've never taken a loan. We've never had a, we've never taken a, any kind of money from a venture capitalist or investor or anything like that. We've never taken a loan and we've never been a penny in debt because we would rather, Paul and I worked like crazy so we, until we could hire a staff. Now, fast forward, we've been very fortunate. So we have a large group of customers. They're very loyal. So we're able to have the funding to have a wonderful team because we pay them well and we treat them well so they never leave. That's the whole idea, but you're right. You have to have a backup plan just in case something goes wrong with one of the employees, including me. We have backup for all of us. So, so then what's the third awesome. question? Because you said there were three questions. Yes, and also if you build the most amazing software in the world, You've done 50% of the job in my book, only 50% because the other 50% is to make sure that client knows what they're doing. Ask them what types of technical support is offered and what are the hours and ask about coaching and training too. And here's why I say this, because a lot of people, because I can tell you support is very expensive, especially phone support, but we still offer it because sometimes people get a little panicked or whatever. And it's usually over nothing that big of a deal and we can help them. But a lot of our job is to comfort somebody. It's okay. It's okay. Just, we just, it's just a preference we need to change. And 99% of the problems are just easy little things like that. But we want people to have that comfort of knowing we're just a phone call away or they can just tech, chat with our support um, team and there's somebody there and we've got two levels at all times somebody's answering a chat or a lot of times they're answering even more than one chat at a time. And then if somebody has a phone call, we have somebody to reach out to the phone calls or help out and chat if needed. So we always have two levels of support there because you can't wait around if you want it, if you need an answer. It's just not good business. So with us, we even answer email support on weekends. So we have somebody come in on the weekends. I don't think anybody does that from any of our competitors that I know of, but we do that not because we're trying to be it's just that we have a big group of customers and we don't, would you want to wait if you had a, a question on Friday night at 10 o'clock in, in the evening um, until Monday? No, most people that's don't. Because that's always when software, yeah. oh, you know, yeah. software <laughs> questions is either the day before. You, know, you have a baby too. Not when it's convenient and when you've right. got all your makeup on, you always have a baby like in the middle of the night when you're looking terrible and then that's when you go into labor, <laughs> at least in my case. Yeah. So we do have a couple, we have a couple questions coming sure. in already. So I'm going to summarize a few of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause one person's talking about, they tried to switch their software to a cloud-based system this yeah. year. And it was just really confusing in terms of transferring data from yeah. one place to another. Another person said something similar is like 
the setup, how do you set it up? And so can you just talk oh, just yeah. about the whole setup process and what it looks like? I think in our minds, we always say, you should be able to just take data from here and oh, put yeah. it up here. But can you just talk a little bit about that yeah. and how that works? I, I'd love it. And I'm going to address the first one first with the data, because that's a big deal. When we have a number of clients, more than you think, that come from one software to another, to, to ours, to PetExec. So we know it's like moving into a new house. There's always, you know, you, in our minds, you're really scared and it's like you have lots of clutter from your other house or whatever. And so I always tell people that, first of all, it really depends on the software they're coming from. So there's certain, and I'm not going to name any of them, okay? But there are certain softwares that the data is what I consider not even usable. So another thing about PetExec, we're not going to know, be, oh yes, just give it to us. And we're just, because we're very transparent on what we can transfer over. Um, certain things don't do well transferring over transactions because everybody sets up their transactions separately. But what we can typically transfer, and a lot of times, it's not even worth it if the data is bad. It's like putting garbage on your table and saying, just pick through it and then maybe you'll find something good. It's just not a good idea. So what we do with the data typically is we'll get the owners, pets, vets, vaccinations. Sometimes with some certain um, software, we can get the notes and then the daycare packages. But our software is a little different. So some people will have just full day packages. And I go, we have options. You could either have full day daycare packages. You can have half day um, daycare packages. And the ever popular, because people love to change their mind, um, <laughs> the combo packs for people who just, they're in one day, a full day, and the other day they're in a half day and the pet exec has the logic to Sherman that. I would say, scrub your data before you give it over to me. Mm -hmm. and, and let me explain what that means. If you have records that are over maybe five years old or something, or, or if you have a way in your software, sometimes people don't, of getting the best, most up-to-date of your current customer list, that would be much better on the data transfer because you don't want to have seven pages of a dog named Bella. Can anybody relate? <laughs> okay, I always tell people it's important data coming in is the quality of the data. And sometimes I tell people if it's under 500, it's probably better just to let them go online because with an online system, at least with ours, you can register online, takes them less than a minute. They'll get this beautiful notification. They could go on. It's a very pleasant experience for everybody. And you get the most up-to-date data because people move, people change their phone numbers and things like that. And so you don't want to be putting in data that's wrong. So I'm a quality control person. That's on the data, but it really depends on the system you're coming from. But yeah, it's a transition period. I tell people I'm very realistic. We've never had a death from a data transfer. <laughs> they just want to die. Um, no, I'm just kidding. They, and I, I say, set a deadline. Set just like everything else in your life. If you don't set a deadline, you're going to kim and hop. So if you want to have pet exec up and working, by or whatever system you're, I shouldn't have said pet exec, any online system you choose on up and working by November 1st. You can work in tandem with the other system, but then you say, okay, everybody, by November 1st, then you would need to have this system going and operational. It's a little bit of work. It's like moving into a new house. We all want to be easier, but it's not. But in the long run, people are much happier. Because, and that was something I was going to address a little bit later. I'm just going to touch on, I'm going to give you a little hint that the, one of the most positive things you can do with your business is to get those two-legged customers addicted to that portal. We purposely, and I'm going to make a confession. I'm very sorry. I, I have to confess that we purposely make the owner portal. And we also have an app for your pet parents, a little bit addicting. So they can go in there, they can see pictures, and they can look at the calendars, and they can schedule things and sign contracts and all this. And that way, they're going to go in there and they're going to save you a lot of work. Okay, but I, 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 I that's such a great that's such a great tip though. And oh. my son is all into gaming, creating gaming, like creating yeah. games in the gaming world. Oh, and we were talking to him one time about he was talking about the best games have an addictive mm -hmm. element in them. 
So I love that for the fact that now your pet parents really want to use the app, but oh. so they're having fun. But on the business side of it, it's, I never thought about that. It's totally saving you time and money as well. Absolutely. That's what, I mean. That's what we say. Get them on the portal. It's easy to get them addicted because there's all kinds of things. And we have an app so you can put all kinds of splash pages and really make it your own. Because it's not about promoting our company. It's promoting you. And really making your customers feel better. Yeah, and that was actually one of the questions is if there was an app. Oh, yeah. It's um, an owner-facing app so for your pet parents, and they love it. We took a huge risk. It's two years of development. And we're going, oh, we hope people actually are interested in it, but it's worked out really great. So it's absolutely very popular. But I, I had a second part to that question that I don't want to um, bypass. And the other, one of them is coaching. So very rarely in your 14 years have I heard somebody say something like, oh, I don't need anybody to help me with my setup. I would just be delighted to set it up all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never. 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 Said, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Said no one ever. Said no one ever because most people, although I like doing that kind of stuff, it's a little bit of a rarity. You're not. So what we want to do is we have coaches. So they look at your, the way you structure your business, which might be very distinct from the way somebody down the street structures it. You want that because you want to set yourself apart a little bit, right? So you, then you can have a relationship with a coach. So what we do is once they confer the type of pricing you have and all of that, then they actually set up the system for you. And then after that's when you kick back. That's the fun part. Yeah. And then after that, they train you and it's a live presentation. And so I recommend recording it. And then every time you get a new staff member, they can just watch that. That's brilliant. And, yeah. that. and so it makes it really easy to train them as well. And that training is being done on their specific one that was set up just for their facility. We're naming conventions and we have different background colors. So if they have different backgrounds and with their logos and all of that. So it's very important to target that business, that business name and, and all of the particulars for that business. So it's very, we're very big on the training and coaching because the transition is so easy. Yeah. People don't well, I, 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 or panic or, you know, anything like that. They're happy. Yeah. And I know Polly, you, you said you have a coach for setup in that you'll set up based on how they operate their business. I don't know if people appreciate how rare that is because for a lot of softwares, you have to change your operating procedures and policy to fit what the software will do. Yes. And that was one of the points that I was also going to cover because no one software is going to manage everything that a business does. For example, some people like these really complex pricing structures and they're tiered and people just are, are selling their pricing structure. I say, I, I just don't like that too much because I think nobody's really interested in a fancy pricing structure. They're interested in the quality of your service. And here's another element to think about. You have to think about what the pet parent sees. Mm -hmm. If you're making it really crazy complicated, they're not going to understand it. It's a high turnover business. You want your staff to understand. And you're an accountant. Susan, yes. so you know how it is. You want your reports to be really clean and easy to read, and you don't really want like fancy things because you can't really determine what your profits are if you're going, okay, it's 20% on this day. And uh, I recommend to people to simplify your pricing structure, not only for all your reporting so it's nice and clean, but also for your poor pet parents. They're going to go in that app and they're going to try to figure out. And then it's going to be a long line on Saturdays. We have you know, these types of pricing. So many of these things you can do in pet exact because we do have a lot of flexibility and bells and whistles. But even with that, I say, try to keep your pricing and um, your structure just Easy, people to understand it. Your staff will not have issues with it. And neither will your customers because at the end of the day, it's easier, even for the most savvy accountant, to figure out what profits are if everything's laid out much easier and you don't have to think of, okay, here's the profit if I have this. Because the nice thing about our statistics report, I don't know if you've seen it, but we have a statistics report and you can actually even sort it by the broad category of products. And then you would have the service type. So you would like um, boarding if you have one guest in this time frame, how much the profits would be. 
And then if you have retail items that go along with that and you would subtract out that cost that you, you know, pay for the item and then you get your total profit so the numbers are real. So you're big on reports at PetExec and that's another thing to keep in mind too. Can I get to this point? Because I, I, this is very important. Um, it was on my list, but I know we're not going by a list here. <laughs> but um, it's, I think it's very important is when you're looking for a software, two very important people in your life should give it the A-OK, -okay, and one of them is your accountant. And I won't say that they're the fun people to do a webinar with. <laughs> they don't want to talk about anything but the data and the reports. So I go, okay, look at all these wonderful, now I just want to know about the reports. Okay, I'll sit for a whole hour and talk about reports. But I do love accountants. I do. Well, um, I, I can tell you, Paula, when I did a software transition and I am an accountant, it was so challenging that my books got behind three months. Yikes. Yeah. You, don't want that. you don't want to make your accountant mad. Just that's my advice. That's why they like everything clean and orderly. They're very picky about those sorts of details as they should be because your data is your business. And you want to be able to look at these reports and quickly ascertain maybe one of the services you offer, it's just not doing well. You're not making a good profit on it. So maybe you could switch gears. You look at the, the reports and you go, wow. I didn't realize it, took, it takes this much of labor and, and all of this to, to do this service, and we're not really doing that well with it. So I think it's really important to just make sure that you're keep, keeping a good stock of what you're doing well, especially in a pandemic right now. Oh. Hold on to your key services that you offer. Like People are like clamoring now for um, grooming now and uh, training more than in daycare also because the grooming numbers are, or boarding numbers excuse me are so low so we have to look at those other ancillary services and make sure they're profitable well and i think profitable and i think it's important to think ask and know about your software what mm -hmm. is it easy to add ancillary services because i know one thing robin and i have been encouraging people to do is to add new services on especially this year but you need a software oh, yeah. that has the flexibility to help you manage and process your operations. So, well, the addiction, the addiction factor comes in there too, because with our, either the owner portal or the app, what's really cool about it is PetExec is going to check to make sure you don't overbook the book if you're full. So if somebody's right. in there and they're scheduling a boarding, then it takes you to another page. It's, do you want to add a group? <laughs> um, do you want to add another service? Maybe you have another type of service you schedule, maybe like a massage or taxi or whatever, uh -huh. and all of that. And then you can go through that. And then also, and that's not all, those are scheduled services that you would put a, a distinct date and time to. But we also have services where you might not need to schedule them. They just need to happen during a time frame, like maybe a Kong treat. Or here's the example that I have. And for those of us who have kids or seen kids at the grocery store in that aisle with the candy. <laughs> so you're, you see these parents, you go, oh, you better not go down that aisle because your child is going to want that candy. Mm -hmm. right? Well, it's the same idea with the way they go through and they're seeing all this stuff and they're feeling a little tinge of guilt. I feel a little guilty putting them in boarding, but they have all these cool add-ons. You read them a story or I've seen some really clever ones tuck them in, you give them a little treat right before bed. Just these sweet little things you could do. And they're just a couple bucks, three bucks, five bucks or something. You know, people are to check out and maybe they wouldn't think of them otherwise. Mm -hmm. And they can just add them to that boarding and keep on going. And then it takes you right over. All those services are added in. So it works out really nice. Well, and add-on services can be a big money maker. Absolutely, they can. On an annual basis. So I... I I'm a big proponent in the dog ears. We definitely encourage that mm -hmm. as long as they are good for the pet. And it's, and most of them are that we see for sure. <laughs> the other thing with add-on services is you don't want to put a ceiling on how much someone is going to spend with you. And so I, even if you're all inclusive and you have a core base of services that you want to include for either daycare or lodging, grooming or whatever, 
mm-hmm. still let clients add on to that because they will and they should have that ability. And I'll give you a case in point myself. I'm a little bit of a diva with my dogs. So I brush my dog's teeth. I used to have two, but I was fostering and now I have three. I am a foster fail. I'm a recent foster oh, fail. I, I don't know, but I could not give her up. I just couldn't. But I brush my dog's teeth every night. And people say to me, well, I try it once a month or whatever. And I go, what would your breath smell if you didn't brush your teeth every day? It's not their fault. It's, you know, just at night, just go brush the teeth when you're brushing your teeth. So to me, that's just something you do. And mm-hmm. so any place I go to, I'll pay extra. Yeah. It's usually not on the list of what they typically offer, mm-hmm. but I'll pay anything because I want them to brush their teeth. I wouldn't be able to sleep in a motel. When, before the virtual con, when we were doing the real face-to-face conferences, somebody has to watch my dogs and they, that's just something I require and I'm willing to pay for it. So I think you should always um, consider the needs of those people and not assume they won't pay for it. Yeah. They will. If they want it, they'll pay for it. Yeah, because their clients are the crazy dog parents like us. And of course, we're going to pay for it. <laughs> oh, here's the other thing that's really, because I always like to be very hopeful because I still think our economy is still, it's going to snap back. But even in, in a bad economy, people will skimp on themselves, but they don't tend to skimp on their children or their pets. Isn't that funny? So our industry is going to be fine, even in a bad economy. So that's why I'm very excited to be looking forward and I'm praying for those boarding numbers to go back Uh, for the holiday seasons. I'm just praying for those numbers because my customers mean everything to me. And I want them to, of course, benefit from years in the past where they would, their biggest complaint was, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? We're full and we're booked and people want more. And that was their biggest problem. I pray for that problem. <laughs> I know. I think we're all going to celebrate when that happens. I'm, I'm ready to celebrate and hope it happens. Exactly. Say, I'm back to ask some questions. So we had a couple of people asking about pet exec or any software really being cloud-based and the pros and cons, I guess, of that. And then also, can you talk a little bit about backups? And is there a, is it only a hard, is it only a cloud-based backup or is there some other type of backups? So just talk a little bit about sure. that. I'd love to, I'd love to. It's a great question because when we started out, people would use programs and sometimes programs, and this was another big point I was gonna make, the software I represent is not the best fit for everybody. It's just not. Some people don't need a gigantic system that does all this reporting and stuff like Petexec. Petexec. In fact, I was talking to somebody last week and they didn't have the best internet and they had this very small, just adorable. I love these people. Really good. They did it right. They have a wonderful business, quite small. But I said, you would not benefit from a web-based system like Petexec because it's your internet is too dodgy and where you're you're at. So I'm not afraid to tell people this is not a good choice for you. Or even if they did have good internet, they were just too small to recoup. They don't make enough um, profits to really benefit from a software that's so big and grandiose and they don't need all that. A lot of people do. So some people do um, benefit just fine with a system that's not cloud-based. But there's issues with both. And I just want to go into this because people in the very beginnings, people didn't trust the cloud. Oh, they have to and it's going to, people are going to get in there and they're going to um, um, go into the servers and you know things are going to happen. And I think people would be surprised. And we have, I think it's 10 or 11 servers. We have secure servers, we have load balancers. It's a very intricate type of a thing that we have because we just can't fail. So we have to have backup servers and switches and things like that. And so our backups are on a continual loop. So it's not every five minutes or anything. Our backups are on a continual loop with another server, which is very important because if you're in an airplane and you're in a 747 and one of their engine fails, what are you going to do? The whole plane's going to drop, but it switches on to another engine to keep the thing going. It's the same kind of thing with us. 
The other thing to note, and you don't really see it that much unless you're behind the scenes, is that there are hacking attempts nonstop. We have people trying to hack into our servers daily from different countries. So we do all kinds of uh, proactive measures to prevent any kinds of malware or other kinds of activities against our servers. There's a lot of expertise that you're always having to have infrastructure updates, things of that nature. We're constantly doing that. We're constantly watching because it's a very important thing to know that whatever software company that you work with has experts behind the scenes watching those servers and that they're cloud-based in a sound data center. It's not cheap. You would see my bills. It would curl your hair. <laughs> so um, if you would see how much it costs, but it, it for us, it's one of those costs that we want the security. We want the infrastructure that it takes to be able to accommodate the needs of our consumers, which are big and small, but we have a lot of very large customers and franchises and, and people like that. And um, everybody's business is very important. So we have to make sure this is their bread and butter. We can't sit on our tails and just hope nothing bad happens. We have to anticipate things bad are going to happen and to have a, have a plan in place for that. Yes, very good questions. And I think I might have mixed them together, but yes, we do. Our backups are on a continual loop. We don't back up every five minutes or anything. We used to when we were much smaller, but we're in a different world now. <laughs> that, um, that data is so precious and there's so many millions and millions of bits of data going back and forth amongst those servers and transactions and things like that in different countries that we have to make sure that our data um, center and the, the process behind the a networking of those servers is very strong. So. The other question, oh, go ahead, Susan. I was just going to follow up on the being cloud-based because I can tell you when this did happen to my company, when Hurricane Ike came through, we mm -hmm. only lost power for a couple hours, but our internet mm -hmm. at the business was down for a week. And I know I've asked this question of everybody mm -hmm. that's cloud-based. You guys have a way for businesses to access their data, even if internet is down, correct? Not if the internet is down, but in a pinch, you can always tether to your smartphone, even when we're in, because I've had my internet go down. In fact, um, at trade shows, you know how wonderful oh, yeah. the internet is there. Yeah. So they, and they want to charge you an arm and a leg for it. So I'm not doing that. So we tether to smartphones. There's a potential for your internet to go down mm -hmm. for a variety of reasons, weather or, or whatnot. So you should have a backup plan in place. And a lot of times it's just as easy as tethering to your smartphone in a pinch. But at this point in technology, we don't have a way for you to access your data if your internet goes down. But people on the app, <laughs> they, it's so funny because on smartphones, it's just different. So you're, right. on a different, you're on a different network. So they can just, in fact, we had somebody do that during all the hurricanes. We always feel so bad for these people and what they're going through because it's not just their software. Their lights are going out, their air conditioning, all these other things that rely on all this, these energy and power sources that are also out that they have to worry about keeping the dogs cool or warm in whatever case it might be. And other very important factors. So the last thing you want to worry about is your software dogging out on you. But luckily we have, people can go on their smartphones real quick. Everybody has one. They're all addicted to their smartphones. Get on how to get it. So that, that Chris had asked that question initially and he was, and I think you've answered this, but just to make sure he was actually asking also, if you do any, if there's any local backups that are at the facility, but you don't do anything. We, like we don't that. allow that for security reasons. I know what he's asking. We just don't allow that. We, we do backups. It's, it's a, it's, would be a very hard thing. We do have some of our clients, a handful, we have some franchises that use our system and we have some people that are just grand. They're so big that they need their own place on a separate server. So we have an enterprise version for them. Sounds like Star Trek, <laughs> <laughs> but we do have an enterprise version for them. And, but still in that case, you would be able to see more information and you could use our open API to create different information that's pushed to these different reports and things like that if you needed it but no we don't allow that we, we just won't it's just not we don't trust others that are messing with our data 
we do have an open API if somebody's wanting to connect with the open API to do other things, like if they want to push data to embed calendars into their sites and do fancy things like that. We, we do have that technology available though. And can you, the other question we had was a couple of people had asked, and I know PetExec has a lot of modules. So the different services that that's how I equate modules, but yeah. can you just talk about the different sure. ones that you guys have? For Absolutely. All the Our bread and butter is the daycare, boarding, grooming, and we also have those, and we also have a group training module. And then we also have a module called scheduled services because this is dog daycare. We have people who pick up your dog in a Lamborghini. I've heard every interesting service you can think of. They have taxi service, they have walks and other types of things, private training that you could use those modules and that you can really customize those. So a lot of times private trainers, because you can do things, you can attach packages to those. So if a private trainer has, wants to set it up so that they have sent work is a certain cost versus security training or something like that, or maybe even I've heard the circumstance where the trainer has a different value as a hourly cost and they could do it by trainer, but there's a lot of flexibility with that. It's actually very popular. And so people can go on their app or the owner portal and they can request those services and you could be able to see right away from wherever you're at, either the trainer or whoever is those requests to add those service. You just add and then boom, that person will get that confirmation email or text or however you set it up. Yes, we do have all those modules and they all come with every version of PetExec. So daycare, boarding, grooming, group training. And then we also have the scheduled services module. And then there's other things. It's not really a module for it, but you can add retail and you know, we have inventory and all that kind of nifty stuff. And then you um, also have a place to do temperament tests and uh, employee clock in and clock out and other things um, like that. So pretty much you just need one system to run everything, which is... True. Most of the time you do. You might need QuickBooks to do your payroll or something like that. But we do have a QuickBooks export and it exports into QuickBooks Online. It's not a direct integration with PetExec. We looked into that. It slows down the system quite a bit. And they would, they would say, you have to use this payment process or whatever. And we didn't like that but and we just want everything to be very fast and not have to rely on another company because sometimes that's problematic in itself but yeah we do have we have a lot of people using that quickbooks export and they just export and their accountant no offense susan but sometimes people are a little bit afraid of uh, talking about accounting so what we recommend is you could set up an employee type for an accountant and you could allow them the reports that they just salivate over. They love the, we have a billing report, which is basically your revenues broken down by category. Statistics, taxes, of course, everybody loves those tax reports. And then there's projections and there's some other various reports they might um, want to be able to use. But we also have that QuickBooks export. And I go, if you give them a username and password, and only allow them into those different areas, then your account can just go do that when they're ready. They don't have to ask you to give them that information. That's a big time saver. And I love that you will um, break it down by revenue category, because I can tell you how many PLs that all I see is services in this one big category. And that drives me crazy because you got to know by service where you're well, making. We can do a little webinar with you. All right, we have about 10 minutes left. So I just want to jump to talking about some of the beneficial trends now with software oh, technology. Yes, yes. Okay. one of my favorites. And what I see, and I'm very lucky because I have a bird's eye view of a lot of different clients that are actively using PetExec. I'm not spying on them or anything, but we also have a a shared Facebook page for our pack mates and not to brag, but truly these are some of the most dynamic, um, creative, brilliant people I've ever met. So I am not shy about asking them to share with me some of their tips and what they're finding is going on. And I, I have an open dialogue with a lot of these people and almost 99% of them will say that the owner portal 
or the app has revolutionized their life because the number of phone calls drops to nothing. Because people, it's almost, because I've heard the argument in yesteryear, people say, we want that customer service field where the person calls us and, you know, asks for an appointment. I go, they can still call you. It's not like we're prohibiting them from calling you, but what if they're in the middle of the night and you know how you wake up in the middle of the night, you go, oh, I forgot to book fluffy for boarding. I, I spaced it out today. And then you think of that thought. You can either wait till the next day and call or just go on your phone. It's right next to your bed anyhow. <laughs> so yeah. you can just go on there and do that. But they say that and that all the messaging. We have something called Pet Snaps Messaging. And a lot of the other softwares will have messaging options too. We're right from the dashboard. If, if you don't even have to be on your phone. You can just... Or, or you can just take a, a camera, anything with a camera, like a smartphone or a tablet, and you can just snap a picture of the dog because they're always moving. You can just snap that picture and just send that to that client or an app message. They love it. It takes you two seconds and it's so inexpensive. It's just another way to keep those clients engaged. I would say the biggest trend and the biggest future trend that we see is apps because and another thing that I, I mentioned to people is I remember the days because I'm going to date myself that we'd look at catalog and we'd have to call in our order. Now on Amazon, I don't know anybody who hasn't gone on Amazon and placed an order because it's so convenient. You just go yeah. on there. Sometimes you can leave your cart open if you don't, you can't think of what you want yet or whatever. It's really con- kind of convenient. It's the same kind of thing with pet exec. Would I rather have to call every time I needed to place an order with Amazon or would I rather just place my order and be done with it? So it's the same kind of a feeling. And we've noticed that the more we offer them, the more they do. So people can do things like let them purchase. It's all up to you, the way you set it up. You set it up very important so they can purchase packages online and see how many days are left on that package and they can view their calendars and they're all color coded and what services they have going on and their past messages and you can send a little note and everything's branded to your business so it's it just makes gives them one spot to go to do all these things so i'm a big fan of the app and i'm a big fan of pet parents making your life pet um, business owners more simple and they take all that time away all those mundane things you don't want to do like when people pay um, an invoice or whatever, they've got a, a, a negative balance and you have to go after them. They can see that they have a negative balance and they can just pay it off. And it's reflected real time. So I say, put your customers to work. And they like I, it. I think that's a great that's idea. My <laughs> exactly. You can save your staff time for introducing new customers and differentiating for them, why they're going to pick you. And a selling point is that the app will be there that they can use. And mm-hmm. I, I think the younger generation almost expects it. I think so too. And the other thing too, that I hear a lot in, if, if people have the question, what's the hardest thing about running a dog daycare? You would think, oh, the reporting, they always say the same thing. It's the hardest thing to hire staff, right? Yeah. Um, good staff. They, you have a high turnover and all of this stuff. So you might not have to hire as many staff to do some of these things if you put your software to work, but you have to put it to work. It's willing to work. Let those customers in there and, and do some work for you. So I think that is probably the most revolutionary thing that I'm finding out there in a lot of different businesses, but certainly ours. See, there's always a way. And that's why you guys have coaches to do the setup because these are important things to work together on. You guys know how the software works. I know how my business works Mm -hmm. and we need to partner in getting my technology in place. Precisely. That's the whole, that is the beauty of the connection. And yeah, I would just leave it with that. Just make sure whoever you're talking to with these companies Asks you, just make sure they know what your business setup is. And then it, it, it's a reflection on who you are as a business owner, the way you do these things. Make sure that they address that and say, uh, yes, we do it this way. Or this is the way our pop points work. Mm-hmm. Well, this is the way you do it. This is the way ours. Well, this, um, because sometimes you might need to make an adjustment or two. But usually there's a little bit of a, a reason for our madness that we come up with a design this way because it's reflective in the reports. So you have a much better way of gauging what your data is if it's formatted in such a way. 
And yes. the reports are important for the owner. I'm a biggie on that. And I think too often <laughs> look at the functionality and the ease of the team getting the dogs in. And the care is important too, but you've got to get the data out and reports. And then the last question coming in, and I know this does happen on some of the softwares um, that you have to use one credit card processor. Um, They're probably wondering why. <laughs> Yes, um, we did a lot of due diligence because I think all of us have been ripped off at one point or another, including yeah. myself. So I did a lot of due diligence. In fact, I went to a comptroller of a bank before I went with this company. So yes, we do require that you use our merchant um, processor. We used to have it open, but think of it this way. Every time you integrate, you have to have a different integration with each different type of there's so many processors out there and some of them are just crooks. They are. I don't want to work with some of them. I've seen what they do. So it's easier for us to work with a company. They know pet exec. They're very good with technical support. They, we've been working with them for a number of years. We use them at pet exec. I'm going to make sure everybody gets a good deal. So we, <laughs> but the deals are, are good as far as the pricing the transactions, pricing and things like that. Although he's much better at talking about those sorts of things than me. But yes, we do use first class merchant services and I absolutely love them. So we're integrated with the Clover Mini as well, just in case you want to know that. If you're looking for a software and just are trying to sort out the differences between mm -hmm. some of them and what's important, just reach out to Paula because she is happy to help. I know she has the same love of those business owners as we do. 